Now we're going to be working on finding the inverse of a given function using algebra. And for problem number one, we're going to uh, write out f of x equals x squared minus 4. And the restriction is that our domain should all be numbers greater than or equal to 0, or positive numbers. So the first step is to uh, change f of x or the f of x notation into y equals x squared minus 4. And the second step is to interchange the value of x and y. So x becomes y and y becomes x. And then we're going to be solving for the value of y. So in this case, we'll add 4 on both sides. And we'll have x plus 4 equals y squared. And to get rid of y squared, we'll take the square root of both sides. So this cancels out, and y is plus or minus the square root of x plus 4. Now the restriction is that x should all be numbers greater than or equal to 0, which means it cannot be negative, or x cannot be negative. So our inverse function, f inverse of x, should just be the positive value of the square root of x plus 4. So this is our inverse function for problem number one. For problem number two, we have f of x equals x minus one squared. And our restriction is that x should be less than or equal to positive one. So our first move is to change y, the function f of x into y function, and interchange our x and y so we'll have our function as x equals y minus 1 squared. And after interchanging your values of x and y, you are now ready to solve for the value of y. And in this case, we'll take the square root of both sides. And this will be a plus or minus the square root of x equal to y minus 1 plus or minus the square root of x. And by adding 1 on both sides, we'll have 1 plus or minus square root of x equal to y. Now the restriction is that the value of x or our domain should all be less than or equal to 1. So that means we're going to be taking the negative side or the negative value of our function. So f inverse of x is simply 1 minus square root of x. So that it will still be true with the restriction of x being less than or equal to 1. Now for problem number 3, we have f of x equal to x cubed minus 1. So interchanging or changing the f of x into y function and interchanging our x and y, we're now ready to solve for y. So add 1 on both sides giving us y cubed and then we'll take the cube root of both sides so we'll only have y cube root of x plus 1 so our f inverse of x is cube root of x plus 1 and this is our inverse function and for number 4 we have f of x equal to x plus 2 raised to the third power so we are now going to rewrite this into y equals x plus 2 cubed and interchange our x value and y and now we're ready to solve for x so taking the cube root of both sides will eliminate our cube function equal to y plus 2. And by subtracting 2 on both sides, we'll have cube root of x minus 2 equals y, or the inverse function of x is simply the cube root of x minus 2. So that is our problem number 4. And for the last problem, we'll have our last two problems we'll have f of x number 5 equal to x minus 1 
rewriting it into y equals square root of x minus 1 will help us interchange our x and y and now we're ready to solve so by taking the square of both sides we'll have x squared equals y minus 1 and then by adding 1 we'll have y equals x squared plus 1 so our inverse function is x squared plus 1 and for number 6 we have f of x equal to the cube root of x plus 1 so we're going to change this into y equals the cube root of x plus 1 so we can interchange the x and the y and solve for y so by subtracting 1 x minus 1 is the cube root of y and to get rid of the cube root we'll take the cube of both sides and we'll have x minus 1 cubed equals y so our inverse function for problem number 6 is f inverse of x equal to x minus 1 cubed and uh, that's how we find or solve for the inverse function of, of an algebraic or a function using algebra or finding the inverse of a function using algebra and now we're going to be working on finding the inverse of a function given its graph so the graphs that you are seeing right now are all the graph of the f of x so to find the inverse function we know that it's a reflection on the function y equals x so this is our y equals x and we're going to produce a new graph that will be a reflection of the blue graph along the y equals x axis so to do that we're going to be identifying some points that's given in this graph so this point is at 4 4 so that means the inverse of 4 4 is simply 4 and 4 so this is our first point and the second point will be at 3 and 2 so that means the inverse is 2 and 3 so x is 2 and y is 3 so this is our inverse um, point for 3 and 2 and for 2 and 0 its inverse would be 0 and 2 so 0 and 2 is somewhere here and for the last point we have x is 0 and y is negative 4 so interchange that and we'll have negative 4 and 0 and if you connect your dots we'll be able to produce our inverse function so we found our inverse function using this graph and that's what we're going to do with the second one as well so let's draw the diagonal line and the first point that we're going to be using would be this point at negative 3 0 so we'll have 0 and negative 3 so this is our point and then this point is at negative 1 and positive 2 so we'll have x is 2 and y is negative 1 and uh, the next point right here we have 5 and 3 so its inverse would be 3 and 5 so x is 3 and y is 5 so somewhere here and by connecting our dots we are now able to produce our f inverse of x and for the third function let's draw our line of reflection and the first point is at 0 and 1 so 1 and 0 will be our reflection point right here and this one would be um, 1 and 2 
so the reflected point will be at 2 and 1 so somewhere here 1 and 2 2 and 1 and then this point right here is at 2 and 4 so our point would be at 4 and 2 so our function inverse function would be given by this graph and for the last function we'll have our points let's start with this one this one is at negative 2 and 4 so we'll have uh, 4 and negative 2 so somewhere here and then this point is going to be negative 1 and 2 so we'll have 2 and negative 1 positive 2 and negative 1 somewhere here and this point is at 0, 1. So our point would be 1, 0. So somewhere here. So our function now is going to be a reflection on the x-axis and an asymptote at this function. So this one is a little bit weird to graph. But it starts here. And this is our f inverse of x. So this is how we graph the um, inverse function of a given f of x.